Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people know me as ZA Reptiles. And today, I'm going to be showing you how you can take your tub keeping to the next level. So, this is my new tub for tinsel, my sunbeam snake. We've got our light to install inside. This just came right from Walmart. I have found that it works well for plants as well. And then we've got our frame so you guys have seen us convert tubs to front opening before in the past we're doing that again this time we've got our screws our framing this is a more narrow frame because she needs a lot of dirt for digging so i just need a little bit of room to squeeze my arm through so this is what it'll look like so they do send you instructions so first step is attaching the corner pieces you want to make sure the three hole pieces are on the top and bottom the sides have two holes, that's how it connects to the side pieces. So then I just took a sharpie or a marker and marked where the holes should be. From there, I pre-drilled where I marked those holes so that it'd be easier to put the screws in. Once that was done, I lined it back up with those corner pieces grabbed a screwdriver and the screws they send you and screwed it on. The hardest part of doing this alone was making sure that I was squeezing the pieces together so that we got a nice uh, tight fit with the screws and the corner pieces and the sides and tops and bottoms and whatever. Um, try not to leave any gaps so that you have a nice even frame all the way around. You get what I'm saying. And so there's the first corner. So now I'm going to do the three other corners. Okay, so now I have the corner pieces attached to the top and bottom. And now it's time to add in the sides. And then I just repeat it for the sides. So I did this whole frame piece thing by myself. You know, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Attaching it to the tub is a little harder, but putting it together, easy. And as I say that, here's a video of my boyfriend cutting the hole. So I put the frame on, I outlined it, and then we cut the hole and sanded it down to be nice and smooth. But now for the most exciting part of this upgrade. So this upgrade was a collaboration with Custom Reptile Habitats. They're trying to help me reach my goal of showing people that tub keeping doesn't have to be just simple and basic. You can make it enriching, you can make it naturalistic, you can take it to the next level. I'm not against using tubs for your animals. I think they're great, you know, they're affordable. In the case of sunbeam snakes, they hold amazing humidity. I loved using a one for my rainbow boa. Both of my ball pythons are currently in the same setup with the front opening tubs. But this is the first time I've done this. So this is where the collaboration happens. Custom Reptile Habitats was kind enough to send me a three-piece background for this tub because we we're testing out to see if we could attach a background into tubs. So they sent me some sealant to try. And then of course, they sent me this extra little piece of goodiness. Uh, is that even a word? I don't know. But essentially, I forget what this stuff is technically called, but you put it on the spray foam in the cracks in between. So I did go get spray foam, actually I think I had some. But you put it on the cracks like in between the corners to make it blend better with the background. Um, and BRB while I remove all of these packing peanuts and here it is So here is our background for tinsel that they sent me. I had no idea what they were gonna send They picked it out and sent it to me and I absolutely Loved it. So I've got the background and then I have two side pieces So make sure to dry fit your backgrounds before installing them to make sure that you don't have to cut them down to size. I've made that mistake in the past, but I did already dry fit this. So here is the test with silicone. So I did ask them if silicone would work with a tub. We didn't know. So here's the collaborative experiment. So I loaded this background with lots of silicone to see if we could get to work, especially in the spots where it raised up it was uneven this is one of the tricky parts of working with a tub is it's not flat and even it angles out there's bumps so we tried our best so here is all the siliconing and then i'm putting the background on 
and weighing it down with as much random heavy stuff as I can find in my house to try to adhere it to all of these different levels of the tub. So initially it did secure on very well, it seemed to work. Um, spoiler alert, it did eventually release and let go, it was very short lived. But anyway, moving on to the side, because at that time the background worked, as you can see they're a little bit tall. Um, I did have to cut some because of the angle of the tub, so I just grabbed some of these nice old cutter thingies out of the garage. Sorry, I don't know tool names very well. It's slipping my mind at the moment. Traced where I needed to cut it and went to town snipping it. So I wish I had known it was this easy to cut the backgrounds because when I had to cut uh, Calypso's way back when in December, I didn't realize it was this easy and I tried so many tools and it was quite the process. They're literally so easy to cut. What are these, tin snips? Maybe that's what they're called. But anyway, you just gotta use a little bit of muscle on some of the thicker parts, but super easy to cut. And I was just so much easier than what we used to try to do. So once I had the side cut, I did a two part process because there was such a difference in height on the side of the tub. I did silicone on the raised up portion and then spray foam on the deeper portion to try to make it level with the middle part. So this was kind of the part of the experiment where I would see if spray foam worked, because at this time I still thought that silicone worked. And I'm not really sure what happened to the rest of my fudge. Clearly that was a mess, um, but I'll just describe the other part of installing the third side or the second side, because one was the background. You guys get what I'm saying. So anyway, I weighed that side down with rocks. It was at that point I realized the background was starting to release and the silicone wasn't holding. So for the third side, I used only spray foam, no silicone, and then made sure to weigh it down with rocks, especially in the middle. So when the foam expanded, it wouldn't raise it up to, like very much. It would still be pretty flush with the tub. And this seemed to work much, much better. So spray foam has seemed to work well with adhering the background to the tubs. Silicone does not. So if you are going to try this, I recommend skipping silicone completely and just using spray foam and just make sure you weigh your backgrounds down so that when the foam expands, it's not lifting your background way up and making it all wonky um, so that it stays where you want it to stay. And then make sure that you do put a bead of spray foam going in the um, corners and on the bottoms of the tub so that it kind of connects your backgrounds a little bit in the corner and I'll show you in a little bit what that looks like and what I do with it afterwards to make it look nice but first we're gonna jump back to attaching the frame to the tub I skipped that part because I wanted my boyfriend to do it this is why I recommend getting a clear tub so you can see the frame so you know where to drill and screw. There he is working on it while I'm lazy eating cheesecake. So he's just screwing it in. You want to avoid the tracks where the glass will be. So that's why it was very difficult and I wanted him to do it. Okay, so I started carving, but here's what it looks like with the front attached. All we did was screw through the back into the front. You want to try to avoid the tracks. This is where I'd recommend having a clear tub so you can actually see the front piece. With this, you obviously can't see, so I made it a little harder. But now I'm just carving the foam. So the background was held in with silicone and the sides were held down with foam. Silicone did not hold. You can see there's a little bit of foam here because I tried to like squeeze some into the part that had already let go. Now the rest of it's letting go. So it's just kind of flopping, but it's held down in the corners, luckily. So note to self, a silicone does not stick to the plastic. Spray foam doesn't do too bad. There are some spots where it's releasing a little bit, but for the most part, it's holding on. Like these feel like they're on pretty good. They're not really going anywhere. You can see it's wiggling a little bit, but so, so, so far, backgrounds can be installed in tubs using spray foam, not silicone. So now we're just carving the silicone pieces so I can use their uh, little cover-up kit to blend it in, and then this is done. So this part was recorded at night, so sorry for the uh, quality, but following their instructions, the first step to covering up the spray foam was to smother it in silicone. So that's what we're going to do. 
wearing my glove so that I don't have to touch it with my fingers. And then here's the kit with the colors they sent me and a little brush. So you got a dark brown, this lighter color, and more of a yellowy brown. And then we've got it dumped into the divider. I've got a little cup of water. I am wetting my brush and getting some of the extra water off. And then we are starting with the darkest color, so this brown here. And then we're smudging it into the silicone. Smudge, don't smear, because you don't want to clog up your brush. After the dark base is down, we move on to the second uh, lightest, I guess, color. And that will be this kind of more orangey color. And same thing, smudge, don't smear. It looks a little darker than the background right now because for one, it hasn't dried, but for two, we still have to put the light one on after. So just wait because it'll look awesome in the end. And then we move on to our last color, this light, light color, our highlighting color, smudging, no smearing. And this is what it looks like when it's all done. So you don't even really notice that there's a corner there. And so now we're gonna move on to our lights while that dries. It's the last step. So here's our lights from Walmart. And it comes with an attachment. You can attach it to the ceiling. You just gotta screw through the tub. I did put a bead of silicone on the other side to hold the screw because the lid's not that deep. There's not a whole lot for screw to hold on to. So I did silicone the screws on as well, um, just to make the screw a little fatter on the end after it went through. So this is where her tub's gonna go. This is her old tub. We're gonna pull it out of the way and bring in the new one. And I'm gonna prop it up with these bricks and this piece of um, shelving because it is gonna have a heat mat, so I don't want it to sit directly on the floor. Okay, so we've got it plugged in. The heat mat is attached to the bottom with our thermostat. And we're gonna put in, well, I got the lights on too. So this is what it looks like. I'm very excited. Now we're gonna put in the substrate. So I've got a bag of organic topsoil. We're gonna do some play sand, some leaf litter, and some moss. Well, the substrate's gonna hold humidity really well, but also it's gonna be kind of like a semi-bioactive attempt. So you'll notice this window is <laughs> very small, it's about 8 inches. Um, I did that so I could still have a very deep substrate layer for her. This species is fossorial and loves to spend all their time buried. I'll probably never see her out, which is why I wanted a nicer looking tub with a nice background. I can put lots of plants in and have a light and everything. So that it's more aesthetically pleasing for me and for anyone that comes in my room, but still serves the purpose that she needs it to. Okay, so I've got a start. <laughs> I just need more leaf litter, but I've got the moss in now. I'm gonna go ahead and dump in, not yet. I'm still working on getting some leaf litter, but I'm gonna go ahead and start putting some plants in. So people usually say rainbow, or uh, sunbeam snakes don't do that well with plants because they're fossorial and in the dirt. But I'm gonna give it a try. We're gonna focus on using more hardy plants that do really well with high humidity setups. I'm the type of person where, you know, people can tell me it's not gonna work, but I still wanna try it for myself. So we're gonna see how it works out. Again, I'm using hardy plants. I've got some different pothos that are gonna go in. I got this Janet Craig. I have really bad luck with Janet Craig's, but I've had this thing for months waiting for it to go into an enclosure. So I figured I might as well stick it in. Um, so I've taken them outside, cleaned the dirt off of them, thoroughly rinsed them. They've both been quarantined for a while, so they're ready to go in. Okay. 
Okay, so I also went through my cuttings. I'm going to experiment with using her tub as a propagation tub. So I moved over my little vine guy here, my philodendron Brazil, my wandering Jew, some more different pathos varieties, and I have more still water propagating. I just wanted to move over the ones that had roots, so I'm waiting for the others to get roots to move them in here to give them a better shot. But yeah, this is what it looks like. We've got our water dish. Um, her plants, we got some cork bark, and then of course we have our cleanup crew. So I've got some Grand Canyon isopods in here. I culture these from uh, Calypso's enclosure, my rainbow boa. They breed really well in there, so when I need them, I just collect from her. So I just culture them from her tank, and we're gonna throw in. You can see there's one. You can see there's one right there. So. We're gonna dump them in. And last but not least, I've got my springtails. So we'll go ahead and dump those in. So many. For a fossorial snake that never comes out, we're gonna dump the whole thing in. So usually I wanna do that when I'm mixing up the soil, but I forgot. So we're gonna try to work it in there. Cause then you've got charcoal in your soil. And it's just, you know, a nice another additive. But I find I'm uh, messed up, so uh, it is what it is. All right, so here is my version of next level tub keeping. So instead of just having a bare bones tub, we have to lift the lid to get in and everything. We have a tub with front opening, which you guys know I've done before for the ball pythons. They both have front opening tubs, but now we've also added a background to make it look even nicer. I also used a dark tub so the snake can't see through the sides. It's an enclosed space. We've got lots of plants. Just a very nice natural looking setup. I think that um, Tinsel will love it. She'll have a lot more space to explore, room to stretch out. I'm ecstatic that this is happening for her. So just another quick run through because I added more plants because I checked my other propagation box. I've got some Enjoy, um, the plants are already in here, uh, Philodendron over here, and then I stole a new snake plant growth from a potato, my Crusty Gecko's enclosure, because the snake plants are growing really well, and this like baby one. So I stole it for this enclosure. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. I'm really, really, really happy with this. I love the background. I am so grateful to Custom Reptile Habitats for helping me with this project and helping me with my mission to encourage more advanced ways of tub keeping. And it's like not even advanced, it's more intricate ways of tub keeping. And this wasn't an expensive project. The tub itself was like $20. The background, of course, they sent to me, but that would probably be the most expensive part of this project is the background but they're not like outrageously priced they're very decently priced and you know what if that's the only expensive part why not splurge because look how nice it looks and if that's the m most you're going to spend on this whole project is the background for the quality and for how it looks why not because look at that if it just can bring your tub keeping together then it's just chef's kisses and then the frame itself was like, I think it ended up being $50, um, but that includes the shipping. The shipping is <laughs> really expensive. Um, and then the glass, I got at Home Depot and had my dad cut it. So I think it cost me $14, I think it was $7 a sheet. It probably would have been a little less expensive if I just got a big sheet and had them cut it, but I just got two small pieces and cut them to size. And then the cork bark I had on hand, the topsoil is like $2 a bag. 
I just got some moss off of Amazon. The play sand's like $5 a bag at Home Depot and I only used a little bit of it. So I still have some left over. The bowl was a couple bucks at Walmart. Um, plants. This one actually got on clearance at Lowe's a while back. So it was like, I don't even know, a couple bucks. And the rest of these are, are just cuttings that either people sent me or that I took from my own plants. I do want to add, don't forget your ventilation holes. So this tub is approximately like 55 gallons. It's huge compared to what she's in now, and it's still pretty big. It's bigger than these exoterras you see right here. Um, and by the way, this is Zeros. It has another uh, custom reptile habitat background in it. One of my favorite setups. So tub keeping doesn't have to mean rack systems. A lot of people think tubs, they think racks. If you watch my pet pee video, you know my issue with racks. I'll never have my animals in a rack that's not up to my standards of what I expect from myself for keeping. But these tubs, tubs can work really well. You guys know that I like nice setups. I, we built my wooden lizard enclosures last summer. I've got more I want to build. I've got plans for the big boas for their builds. But tubs can work. So again, you guys missed these videos. I did them like two years ago now. They're still holding up great. They're great for my ball pythons. Granted, Clue has outgrown his, so he'll be getting a new setup. But this for tinsel, perfect. And I love the tubs for sunbeam snakes because of how well they hold humidity, because they need that humidity. And they're always buried. You are first never going to see your sunbeam snake. Sorry, my neighbor's mowing his long. But you're pretty much never going to see your sunbeam snake. So a lot of people don't want to spend a lot of money on an enclosure for an animal you're never going to see that's not going to come out and utilize the above ground space. So, and sometimes I don't do well in captivity. Tinsel's been doing amazingly, so I wanted to change her setup as little as possible. So all I did, make the tub bigger. And instead of plastic plants, now she'll have live plants. But other than that, her setup is going to be exactly the same besides, of course, the front opening so that I can view the beautifulness of the work that I just did. <laughs> but again, you don't have to spend an arm and a leg to, give, to get a really nice setup. And that was my goal of this video, was to show how you can take a simple, inexpensive tub setup and take it to the next level. Without further ado, let's get Tinsel out. Um, I hardly handle her now. I feel like she just does so much better without handling and that goes for a lot of sunbeams if not most all. I don't want to clump every sunbeam together because every animal is different but in general the species as hands-off as possible is the way to go. Once I became completely pretty much hands-off with her was when she really started eating consistently and taking frozen thawed mice. So aside from a monthly checkup where I take her out, look her over, I never handle her. So <laughs> I do handle her right before showers now because she does musk. When I got her, never musked. Um, but now that I don't ever handle her, she does musk. She hisses a little bit. She's never tried to bite. Um, she does do false strikes though where she will strike at my hand but not with her mouth open. And then when she is out, she usually comes down a little bit. But I have to wait until she gets all that musking out of her system. So we're trying to make this a quick process. So I'm gonna dig around this tub and look for I'm gonna get my hair out of the way. Hopefully she doesn't musk on this shirt. I really like this shirt. Got a Nazi. Um, and I just got it out of the clean laundry, although I'm sweating right now in my room, so it's gonna have to go back in. Oh, and we're gonna move my Kushu hair tie, my uh, plastic-free biodegradable hair tie, um, so she doesn't musk all over that. Okay, we're gonna start digging through this tub and try to find her. Oh, I also have logs in here. I forgot I had these logs. Maybe I'll move these over to uh, her new tub for the isopods. We'll do that real quick. Oh, and I haven't done it, but I will. With my other ones, I used clear command hooks on the glass for handles for the door. It's worked out great, so I'll have to do it for this one. And I will say, the one part I'm not looking forward to is if I have to do her checkups in the other tub. Um, it takes me a while just to get her out of this little one. Um, because she's very good at avoiding me. She knows that I'm digging so she goes to the other side and I dig over there and she goes back And it's a whole process. So now to do this in a bigger tub and with live plants It's gonna be a process. You know what? I always say my biggest motto 
one of my biggest mottos, I have a lot of things I say, is keeping animals, you do what is best for them, not what is most convenient for you. While I dig for, we want to check out the Custom Reptile Habitat's website. I will put a link in the description. That is going to be my affiliate link. So I do get a small commission if you buy something through that link. Highly recommend you check them out though. I have loved everything I've gotten from them. I have three setups now with backgrounds from them and they are like my three favorites. You're already shaking your tail. Please don't musk on me. If you've never seen a sunbeam before, you're in for a treat. They're one of the prettiest snakes, so it's such a shame that they spend like all their time buried so you never see them. They're so iridescent and amazing. Once in a great while, I'll take her outside in the sun so I can get real good pictures of her or videos of her. Not too often, again, especially now that she starts musking. It's just a more enjoyable experience for all of us if I don't. So, occasionally I'll reshare pictures and posts from the one time that I did it. It's been one of my most liked pictures up to date, is the picture of me with her outside. Oh, stop it. Tinsel. Stop it. You're fine. Knock it off. Oh yeah, she's, ugh. That was a lot of musk. I'm pretty sure it shot all over my bed. You know, I'm trying to give you a nice house. Oh, it's dripping everywhere. You are so gross. So here is Tinsel, my musky sunbeam. Here she is. Iridescent, beautiful, disgusting, angry, and I'm covered in her musk. I stink, but let's see what she thinks. Well, that was about as exciting as it's going to get. <laughs> we won't see her explore, really. She's already buried. She's exploring underneath. So, that's the tub, though. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. So, thank you again to Custom Reptile Habitats for helping me with this project and this experiment and helping me to encourage a next level of tub keeping for reptiles and for sunbeam snakes. So, thank you guys so much for helping me. I couldn't have done this project without you. I'm so grateful. Tinsel's grateful too, even though she's not acting like it. And if you guys want to stay up to date with the progress of Tinsel in the tub and the plants in her tub, be sure to follow me on Instagram. Again, the reptile, our custom reptile habitats link will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye! See, once she's out and she's gotten it all out of her system, she's pretty good.